Perhaps you've heard of it, like on TV or something. At this point, I think we're all pretty much at saturation on climate change. The past 10 years, it's been all day and all night on the news. Climate changes, global warming trend. Climate change, global warming. Climatic changes, climate change. Climate change is real. Climate change is coming to blow up your house and eat your dog. So basically, I'm not gonna be needing that anymore and I'm not gonna be needing that. But what does it even mean? And what does what it means mean? And should you even care? Uh, yeah, you should care. I realize that climate change is one of those things that some people don't believe in. Specifically, there are people who challenge the widely held belief that it's getting hot in here, which I think was firmly established by Nelly in 2002, just before he requested that we take off all our clothes. And that, unfortunately, turns out to not be a particularly effective strategy to combat global warming. Fun, though. Climate change as we know it today is change in our Earth's overall temperature with massive and permanent ramifications. Climate change is a real and serious issue, but isn't the climate always changing? What exactly is climate change and why should we care? Well, the Earth's climate has changed throughout history. Most of these slight changes are caused by small variations in the Earth's orbit. But climate change as we know it today is characterized by an abrupt increase in the Earth's temperature. It is estimated to have gotten 1.2 to 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit warmer in just the last century. 10 out of the last 13 years were the warmest on record. 97% of climate scientists agree that this new tendency is not caused by the variations of the Earth's orbit, but rather very likely caused by human activities. That means you and me. NASA says that 97% of climate scientists agree that the warming we're experiencing is very likely due to human activity. That's NASA. It's right there on their website, climate.nasa.gov. 97% of climate scientists agree on this. And 97% of scientists don't agree on much. I want people to feel empowered to ask questions about what is being fed them from the science community. Um, that uh, something's not making a whole lot of sense uh, when it comes to inconsistent data right. that is being produced and being fed, especially to our children, when it comes to global warming or climate change, whatever they're calling it today. That was one sentence, by the way. One very long, <laughs> very dumb sentence. And here's another one. It's perpetuated. It, it's, it's repeated so often that um, too many people believe that, oh, well, I guess if 97% of every, you know, all scientists believe that man's activities are creating changes in the weather, who am I to question that? <laughs> exactly. Who are you to question that? It's we keep hearing that 2014 has been the warmest year on record. I asked the chair, do you know what this is? It's a snowball. And that's just from outside here. So it's very, very cold out, very unseasonal. So here, Mr. President, catch this. But if you talk to the average person, I think they understand that this is something serious and we've got to do something about it. Translating concern into action is the challenge. And part of what makes climate change difficult is that it uh, is not an instantaneous catastrophic event. It's a slow-moving issue that, on a day-to-day -day basis, people don't experience and don't see. Hi, I'm Aradna Tripathi. I'm a paleoclimatologist and isotope geochemist. Hi, I'm Alex Hall, and I'm a climate scientist. I'm Jeremy Pell, and I'm a hydroclimatologist. I'm Nina Karnofsky, and I'm a polar ecologist. I'm Chuck Taylor, and I'm an environmental analytical chemist. I'm John Dorsey. I'm a marine environmental scientist. Over the past 40 years, thousands of scientists have studied climate change. Definitely happening. And it's caused by human beings. That's you and me. And the consequences could be extremely dire. Catastrophic. Apocalyptic. And here's the thing. When we tell you all this, we're not with you. Climate change has consequences for our oceans, our weather, our food sources, and our health. One of climate change's biggest victims is our oceans. Oceans regulate the Earth's temperature and provide 50% of the Earth's oxygen. But climate change has increased the global temperature of the oceans by more than 0.3 degrees Fahrenheit since 1969. Although a warmer ocean might seem inviting to a beachgoer, it actually has devastating consequences for supporting life at sea. 
One of those consequences is ocean acidification, a direct effect of increased dissolved CO2. Since the late 18th century, ocean surface acidification has increased by 30%. A higher acid content means calcifying species, like oysters and clams and shallow water corals, are at risk, putting the entire ocean food web at risk. This is bad news for the one billion people relying on the ocean as its primary source of protein. Climate change has also caused the sea level to rise. Just in the last century, sea levels have risen 6.7 inches, but the rate in the last decade has nearly doubled. Sea levels have risen because as the ocean gets warmer, it swells. On top of that, glaciers and ice sheets are melting. Antarctica lost 36 cubic miles of ice between 2002 and 2005, and since 1994, each year on average, the Earth has lost 400 billion tons from its glaciers. That's like an ice cube, seven and a half kilometers on a side, four miles on a side, melting and flowing into the sea. When all that ice melts, it fills up our oceans, and just like filling up a bathtub, the shores can't hold all that water, and coastal regions get flooded. Troubling signs of climate change are increased extreme weather events. Natural disasters like floods, tornadoes, and deadly heat waves are more obvious to humans because of their immediate impact and their sharing of the images in the media. Warmer temperatures also make weather more extreme. This means not only more intense major storms, floods, and heavy snowfall, but also longer and more frequent droughts. These changes in weather pose challenges growing crops becomes more difficult. The areas where plants and animals can live shift and water supplies are diminished. In addition to creating new agricultural challenges, climate change can directly affect people's physical health. In urban areas, the warmer atmosphere creates an environment that traps and increases the amount of smog. This is because smog contains ozone particles, which increase rapidly at higher temperatures. Exposure to higher levels of smog can cause health problems such as asthma, heart disease, and lung cancer. No matter what Sarah Palin and these geniuses she surrounds herself with try to tell you, climate change is not a liberal versus conservative thing, but the people who profit from ignoring it want you to believe it is. When it comes to climate change, the main takeaway is that it's real. And although we are part of the cause, we can also be part of the solution. So just to sum up, global warming, real. It's real. Man-made, caused by carbon pollution. Temperatures soaring. Oceans rising. Ice melting. For real. We're not with you. We're not with you. We're not with you. Believe us, if not for our generation, then for his. You mother better not.